All right, people, in this JavaScript exercise, we're going to work with some arrays. We're going to have uh, two arguments. One's going to be an array. The other is going to be a number. The array is going to be um, all sorted, and we have to try to sort the array and then determine where the number would fit in that array. Specifically, we're going to return the value of the index. Let me just show you what I mean. So let's say if I have an array and I put some numbers in here, two, three, four, six, seven, and then I have... Uh, oops. And then I have five. We want to, we have array, the number. And so we want to return a value of where this number fits in this array. What I mean is it's going to fit at what? Zero, one, two, right here in index three. We would want to return the value of index three. Here's the thing. We want to make sure we can do this for any array in any number. So if I have four, one, seven, three, or three, nine, uh, six, where would five go? Well, f sorted, first of all, this array would be one, three, four, seven, you get six, seven, you get what, it's, what I mean? Five would go where? We don't know. Let's just get to making a function here. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. First thing we do, let's give it a name. Let's call it uh, get index of, um, say, ins for insert. And then let's call this function. Well, let's create the function. Function get index. There we go. And then we have an array. And we have a number. And then we have code block. And then we'll return the array. And I'll show you what we get. We have it's the array, not the number. Four, one, seven, three, nine, six. We'll worry about the number later. We'll use that when we do our, our magic. Uh, all right, step one, how do we sort this? It's actually not that difficult. We just use a method called sort. And then if we run this, we have the numbers sorted. Now, here's the problem, though. Uh, sort does not work quite the way you would want it to. It works in a, in a way called Unicode, which means that if I have one of these things, if I say it's like two digits long, if this is 77, and it stays in the same spot, that's not right. The order of this should be 1346977. But because it reads it in Unicode, it starts with the numerical number 7, and it says what the next digit in this number is, which is also 7, and then it moves on to 9. The reason it does this is for strings. So if I wanted to sort the names of things, it would use uh, the alphabet, but we're not going to worry about that. What we have to do is worry about how to sort this thing using the sort method. Uh, how this works is that we have to call a function, name it the function, uh, some and a code block and from here I'll show you how this works we need two callback functions uh, we'll just call it a and b then we'll return them um, from left to right how that works is a minus b if I do this and I run it now it's in order okay now we can do anything we want we can have uh, 123 we can have uh, 54 and this will all go in order okay just the way we want it to so we'll leave that up here for now, and then uh, if we just do this and then return the array, we can keep it looking nice. Um, so we'll keep our array up here at the top, and then get the same result we want to. Uh, oh, great, great. Now we have a, an array that's sorted in order, and we can start doing um, whatever we want with it. We can start creating a for loop. We'll go around it with a, with a for loop, set up the index. Oops, i equals zero, i is less than the length of the array, and then we'll increment the uh, for loop, and then let's console log that our good old array that we love doing so much, and then we should get each item in this array spitting back out. So when I first tried solving this, uh, my first inclination was to use the index of method, because then you could somehow... Find the index of a, you know, of a, of a of an array that was what you know a natural person would think, but uh, what I never thought to do was that if you just return the index that I set up here, then you get the indexes of this array one at a time. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's much more convenient because then we can take these values and we can compare it to the number that we're passing through here, and then see which one is bigger. If it gets bigger than one of these, whichever one we want, then um, we'll be in good, you know, we'll be in good company. We'll be in good shape. Excuse me. So let's go back to that. Uh, let's keep this index here. We have this, um, 
if this is equal to the number, uh, it's probably going to return yet yeah, false. Uh, so we will be so five is going to be at yeah. So five is going to be at index one. So we come up with false first because five is more than one, but then we come up with true here because five is less than six. So let's just make an if statement. If we get to that spot, then let's just return the index. And what do we get? Uh, we are in good shape. Five is at index one. What if I had the number 42, 43, excuse me. Uh, 43 will be at index three. <laughs> that's it. Uh, here's the problem though. What if I had a huge ass number that's all the way out there? If I just get, you know, whatever. Then I get the array back. Why is it doing that? Well, because the index of the array never gets um, any lower than the number. It's always going to stay higher than the number. So we're never going to return anything from the index. We just return the array. How do we fix that? So easy. We just have to return the length of the array and we'll put it at the very end, no matter how big this thing is. So it's going to be at index number six. And that's how it's done. That's it. <laughs> All right. See ya.